morning. This morning's Mass has been offered for us and our families, and in particular the parishioners of St. Francis Xavier. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Today we celebrate the seventh Thursday of Easter time, and only a uh, three more days till Pentecost. Let us come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. And just to announce, for those who have not heard, Dr. Kenneth McLeod died last night, 6.30 p.m. Dr. Kenneth has been sitting up here in the front on this side at this Mass the whole time, the whole two years that I've been here. So we pray for his eternal rest and the consolation of his loved ones. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into their compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep, keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Keep, keep me safe, safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhausts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. 
May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made them known to your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading, we hear that St. Paul is on trial in Jerusalem in front of the whole Sanhedrin. And St. Paul is well aware of a religious division in Judaism between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And one of the main points of division was belief in the afterlife. The Sadducees did not believe in an afterlife, whereas the Pharisees believed in an afterlife, the resurrection of the body, angels, and spirits. So Paul, uh, knowing that he's gonna be on trial, decides to uh, provoke a controversy by standing up and telling them, my brothers, I am a Pharisee, and I'm on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead, which starts World War III between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And so all the focus goes to their fighting and their disunity and their division. And meanwhile, Paul is taken away from the trial and removed from the courthouse of the court situation. That same kind of disunity that was present among Jews, and of course still in, exists in practically every religion, there are different sects and different divisions and different uh, ways of looking at things. Certainly in, in Christianity, we have the Roman Catholic tradition and we have many Protestant traditions as well. But if you listen to Jesus' prayer today, in this the final part of chapter 17 of the High Priestly Prayer, He's praying to God the Father that, that the people, his followers, his disciples might be one, that they might be united and not divided, that they might be one amongst one another and one with the Father and the Son as the Father and the Son are one and united. Though God is a trinity, God is also a unity. And so that's the final prayer of Jesus that they may be one. It's a prayer for unity. And uh, we know looking at the world today, looking at Christianity, we have tens of thousands of different Christian denominations or faith traditions. Uh, we have some of the major branches, of course, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Baptists, uh, Roman Catholic being the largest, but uh, we also have evangelicals and non-denominationals, and this is where the number of Christians grows exponentially, and the number of beliefs differ, and there's diversity, and diversity oftentimes leads to fighting and disagreements. And so what winds up happening is though that we have the truth of Jesus Christ, 
Christians don't wind up presenting a unified front. And so those who are non-Christian are not impressed. And therefore they don't convert and become Christian because they see a complete lack of unity among us. Now, Jesus uh, understood in, in praying for unity, he wasn't praying for uniformity. He knows that we're all different. You know, God created us different. We have different personalities, different temperaments. We came from different families. We have different perspectives on how we view things, different approaches, all, all of that's fine. We see in the Acts of the Apostles, St. Paul was very different from St. Barnabas and very different from St. Silas and very different from St. Mark. And sometimes they couldn't work very well together, but they all had in common the unity of believing and trusting in the love and faith of Jesus Christ. And that's what we have to keep coming back to, to not focus and emphasize so much the things that divide us as Jesus Christ who unites us. That was Jesus's prayer to the Father for us. And that needs to be something we think about. How can we be united instead of divided? We know who the great divider is. The one who divides and separates is the devil and all of his minions, right? But the Lord wants us to be united, not uniform, but united. So let us pray for the gift of unity among Christians unity among Catholics, a unity uh, among our own family and community, uh, our, most, our closest community, that there will be a unity so that we're not divided and giving a really poor witness to the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ and in his love and in his truth. We pray God for the gift of unity so we may be a more effective witness of the unity that exists in you. Let us bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, may the Lord continue to safeguard and guide him as he shepherds us in the ways of faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the grace of God perfect in them a desire for doing his will in their service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For countries suffering from the effects of civil war or conflict, may the Prince of Peace Grant them a lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations, the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we pray our prayer for protection and healing from coronavirus. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick got well. Come to our aid in the midst of the global spread of coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus, May they regain their strength and health. Heal us from fear, which prevents nations and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from pride, which makes us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair, and give them peace. Be with doctors, nurses, researchers, and medical professionals who seek to help those affected and put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they serve. Guide them to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, be with us as we endure and mourn 
persist and prepare. In place of anxiety, give us peace. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord. Amen. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your name, praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Assistance of one minister, please. Commander Nanton, I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I go. For if I do not go, the paraclete will not come to you, says the law. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we will have a funeral mass this morning uh, in a little bit. Uh, Carol Lagarde, the wife of Jerry Lagarde, died, so her funeral will be today uh, at 11 o'clock, and there'll be a short visitation before that. So please leave all the lights on in church. Uh, adoration will be in the main church today from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.